what we intend when we do something often has nothing to do with the, with, with the impact. Jungle gave him a voice that yeah, it was louder than maybe it would have been if he had never written it. He was intending to take a stand, just maybe not necessarily the stand that, that he ended up taking. Upton Sinclair, when he took to his typewriter to condemn the misdeeds of laissez-faire capitalism, painted the picture of a deeply sick American industry. The stockyards of Chicago, Illinois were flawed and desperately needed to take a stand for their reform in a very big way. Sinclair's book was the first of the century to have such an effect on a large portion of America. It thrust Sinclair into fame and into a position where he powerfully fought for justice and fought to defend the rights of people everywhere. As Sinclair said about the success of the jungle, I aimed at the public's heart, but by accident I hid it in the stomach. At the turn of the 19th century, new opportunities for industrialization and technological advancements created a modernized society. New technology eliminated the need for skilled workers, and these unskilled workers were getting little to no pay as there was no regulation in wages. These advances, as well as new financial and business practices, population growth, enhanced transportation, and advanced infrastructure helped to elevate the era of the Gilded Age. Upton Beale Sinclair was born on September 20, 1878 into a military family in Virginia. Growing up, Sinclair's family struggled financially and lived in poor conditions. He still felt fortunate compared to the homeless but was never satisfied with his quality of life. He began to resent the wealthy. Sinclair's dark beginnings sparked his aching for change and reform. He later became a prolific novelist and journalist, writing big titles like Oil, King Coal, and The Jungle. In writing his 1906 novel, The Jungle, though he meant to debase capitalism, Upton Sinclair appalled the public with a brutal account of Chicago stockyards and took a stand for change in the American institution. A heavy topic addressed in Sinclair's The Jungle is the exploitation of immigrants and their poor working conditions in the Chicago stockyards, which alarmed the public and spurred reform. Here was a population, low class and mostly foreign, hanging always on the verge of starvation, and dependent for its opportunities of life upon the whim of men, every bit as brutal and unscrupulous as the old-time slave drivers. The immigrants were essentially slaves to the employers of the packing companies, and were relying on that work to survive in the new country. They would do anything to keep that job, and anything to please their so-called masters. And many of the folks in these, these new packing situations, for example, were not skilled workers. Um, and so they would have had a more difficult time having access to, to a union advocate. They put him in a place where the snow could not beat in, where the cold could not eat through his bones. They brought him food and drink. Why, in the name of heaven, if they must punish him, did they not put his family in jail and leave him outside? At this point in the novel, Jorgis is put in prison because of a fight. He talks of how the prison is preferable compared to the packing house. He is given food and shelter without having to work. The packing houses were so horrid, prison was considered the better option. Thousands of citizens read this and became infuriated. The immigrants were ashamed of themselves for having faith in the American dream. Having left their lives in Europe for a promise that the United States could not deliver, immigrants were left in the wreckage of their hopes and dreams. They were let down hard by the horrible conditions of the meatpacking industry. Sinclair used the Chicago stockyards as a setting for his story, which sparked a movement toward change in the United States by shocking and outraging the public with horrid accounts of the repulsive conditions and quality of food in these working places. The meat would be shoveled into carts, and the man who did the shoveling would not trouble to lift out a rat even when he saw one. There was no place for the men to wash their hands before they ate their dinner, so they made a practice of washing them in the water that was to be ladled into the sausage. There were some jobs that it only paid to do once in a long time, and among these was the cleaning out of the waste barrels. In the barrels would be dirt and rust and old nails and stale water, and cartload after cartload of it would be taken up and dumped into the hoppers with fresh meat and sent out to the public's breakfast. The most famous quote from the book goes into specific detail about the atrocities going into the meats before being sold to the public. The descriptions outraged the public. 
This quote filled toilets with vomit and hearts with rage. The horror does not end there. All day long, the blazing midsummer sun beat down upon that square mile of abominations, upon tens of thousands of cattle crowded into pens whose wooden floors stank and steamed contagion, whose labyrinth passages defied a breath of fresh air to penetrate them. Not only was the meat the public was eating unsanitary, but the people who packaged it for them had equally grotesque conditions to live and work in. This quote shows that every aspect working to deliver the meats to the public was horrific. A light was finally being cast on this industry that had been in the dark for so long. It really goes beyond just meat packing, and people all over the country eat that. The Pure Food and Drug Act was passed six months after the publication of The Jungle. The two were definitely correlated, the jungle being a direct cause of this act. It was the opportunity Teddy Roosevelt was looking for to finally take much-needed action against the conditions in the stockyards. Upton Sinclair wrote The Jungle to paint capitalism as a deeply flawed system by writing about the plight of an immigrant who came to the United States to pursue the American dream. For Sinclair, discovering socialism was like striking gold. He searched for the perfect American industry to tell his sad story and found it in Chicago. For two months, he investigated the appalling stockyards and shared his findings with the world with his novel. Jurgis Rutkus's plight is symbolic of that of working class citizens under laissez-faire. This shows the flaws in the capitalistic government, as the book aims to expose the horrors that are a result of laissez-faire. At the turn of the century, at least 50% of Americans lived in cities. Change was in the air. The Gilded Age seemed to be a grand opportunity for immigrants to finally receive the wealth and happiness they longed for. But due to the capitalist government, problems were waiting for them just under this illustrious appearance. Laissez-faire allowed for all these problems to happen for immigrants, which further Sinclair's argument for socialism. I think he was writing an indictment about capitalism. Mm -hmm. you know, he was an advocate of socialism. That's, when you go back to the title, he talks about societies become a jungle where people tear each other apart. Mm -hmm. And then he wanted to use a description in the meatpacking industry to show that as a, an example of society at large. Big businesses and monopolies were thriving through laissez-faire. With government taking a step back, the heads of these monopolies could run business the way they liked, with poor working conditions and low wages. They needed cheap labor, and immigrants were the perfect employees who needed work so badly they would put up with conditions in the factories, no matter how bad. At this time in history, the divide between the poor and rich grew rapidly. Upton Sinclair shocked the public with detailed accounts of Chicago stockyards with his 1906 novel, The Jungle, taking a stand for change in the American institution, even though his attentions were initially to promote socialism. Sinclair's accounts of the meatpacking industry revealed flaws of capitalism and how this style of government negatively affected immigrants. The book also records horrid accounts of the food that was being packaged and processed in the meatpacking industries, which angered the public and encouraged reform. Through laissez-faire, immigrants were neglected and overworked due to big businesses in need of cheap labor. The jungle's descriptions of these working conditions also shocked and horrified the public, which was a major catalyst for the movement to reform the meatpacking houses, and also for the labor movement. The jungle was a prime example of taking a stand. Upton Sinclair studied the conditions in the Chicago stockyards, gathering information about the perfect depiction of the American dream gone wrong. The jungle paints the picture of America during the late Gilded Age, America changing drastically with the turn of the century. It is a snapshot in time, which is why it is still so relevant today. It brutally showcased all that was wrong with the meatpacking industry, which led to its much-needed reform. The jungle and its problems sadly were not left in 1906. Though the Pure Food and Drug Act implemented some much-needed regulation, there are still problems in the food industry today. In 2011, 3,000 out of the 48 million Americans who became sick due to contaminated foods died from foodborne illness. The 1996 Food Quality and Protection Act, as well as the Environmental Protection Agency, set the standard for much of today's regulation in food and pesticides. In January of 2011, President Obama signed the FDA Food Safety Modernization Act, which gave the Food and Drug Administration legislation to require prevention-based controls for food supply throughout the country. However, some are still not satisfied with the food industry in the United States. Documentaries like Food Inc. and Hungry for Change list grievances about the current state of food in the United States. These films and laws have sparked a new revolution in America, causing thousands to take a stand for change, just like Sinclair did over 100 years ago. The jungle is still esteemed today as much as it was at the beginning of the 20th century. It forever changed the industry and showed how much a book can change history. <laughs>